So this video is how to raise or lower your rear suspension uh, on a torsion bar setup commonly used on French stuff like Peugeots and Citroëns. So it's the rear end we're looking at, not the front, that's a different matter. Um, I want to try and raise mine but the same process is necessary. So who am I? I am a Peggy, a hello, and I know a few bits and bobs about cars. Now this is on my channel has been requested a number of times. However, I will put a link to a video that I always link people to when they ask me about it, which is Darren Lobb. To time. raise or lower the rear suspension on your Peugeot, you're going to need at least the following items. Uh, a jack and something to keep the vehicle nice and safe up on its jack. Uh, you're going to need a tape measure and pen for measuring. Lever bar is useful. Uh, you're going to need some little screwdrivers, a punch, a hammer for said punch, copper hammer, 13mm socket, um, and spanner is useful. 18mm spanner and socket to remove the damper bolt. Uh, this is an M12 by 1.5 threaded uh, head bolt actually, but an, a bolt will do that as well to push out the anti-roll bar plate. And then an M8 by 1.25 uh, bolt, now this is a little taller made up, uh, to pull the torsion bars out here, uh, this one here, that's an M8 by 1.25 bolt. Alternatively you just get a bunch of nuts and spacers with a good strong M8 by 1.25 bolt and you can pull it out that way, it just takes a bit more time and you've got to make sure you've got a nice strong bolt. As I mentioned the copper hammer is useful, a wire brush or a wire wheel on a drill, uh, a bit of WD-40 and copper grease for afterwards. The dog and tennis ball are optional. Um, and then uh, you're going to need some Allen keys, potentially, or particularly Torx, T30, T40 and T50 if it rounds off nicely, which it probably will. So some Torx bits, which is quite handy. Uh, apart from that, obviously, you could use different ratchets and, you know, torque gun, etc. So those are the basics. Let's get on with it. To make sure there's no tension on the beam uh, to adjust, uh, to be affecting the height of it, you make sure the handbrake is off, which it is. Um, and the other thing, which I hmm, might need to just remove some tension on the handbrake, um, that's off though. And we need to disconnect to the damper. In the meantime, what you want to be doing, um, I would suggest, is this bolt, this section, and this bolt here. Give them a wire brush and get some WD 40 on them soaking while you're busy taking the shockers off the dampers. Uh, now yours are going to look slightly different, probably a bit mucky than that, more like this. So um, this needs to come off so just give it, you can give that a clean off with a little brush. So let's give it 13mm, that and that's the same both sides. This is the anti-roll bar plate. Um, this is going to be holding on the torsion mark which is cut off on this example. And again you can have a good clean in there because this washer inside is a concentric washer. Uh, so that needs to be sliding across once you've got this bolt out. So lots of spray, lots of rub in, come back, spray, rub. And then in the middle here, I've replaced mine with metal ones. Uh, there's a plastic bung that ideally you're going to need to get at, really. It talks a bit, so lots of rubbing, lots of spraying until we're happy clean so you can be spraying them and letting it soak uh, while you're taking the dampers or shock absorbers off uh, which I'll just show you now. There's two bolts holding on the rear dampers. There's the lower one there and an upper one running through there. Now I find the lower ones although they seem more accessible a bit trickier because the bolt goes all the way through the arm and on this side especially on mine the exhaust gets right in the way so you've got to drop the exhaust Probably drop a spare wheel to give yourself access, blah 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 blah. But try and knock it through, that gets in the way of the handbrake cable, blah 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 blah. It's right pain. Holds on the bracket for the brakes, bit of a pain. Although it looks awkward, I find this easier. So basically, get your spanner up in there, right there, and then just take the nut off on this side. They are 18s, 18mm spanner, 18mm ratchet. They're going to probably be pretty tight if you've not had them off before. So getting a brush and a bit of WD soak if necessary, a bit of plus gas or something like that. 
if absolutely necessary, but they will come out. So we're going to loosen those off now. There we go. And we'll repeat the other side. And now that's nice and free, you see. to remove this uh, bung slash bolt which is plastic um, and undo this. Now this is not going to be too tricky. If it does snap it's not the end of the world. You can grind it flush, put a new bolt in, tap in. It's 13 mil head. This is a T40 Torx. Fits entirely like that. I would have soaked it with every fluid known to man for at least a day or so before. And the same for the concentric wasser bit here. Giving it a good old soak and rub and repeat. And that too, I believe, is a T40. Yeah. You have to give it a little tap, I expect, in, but that is a T40. So we're going to remove that rubber bung, uh, the plastic bung, and then we're going to get that undone. And then I'm going to show you how to take the anti roll bar plate off uh, doing so on mine over there. I just happen to have a different bolt because I've rebuilt this um, and a different slotted sort of head I've done on that one. Um, but the principles are the same. Promise. Gonna give it a little tap. Sometimes it wants some encouragement. I can see that it wants to go. Now, just like me, you might find that it doesn't really want to go and it starts spinning in it. So your alternative to that is to put a bigger Torx in, keep coming out. The other thing I've had to do, and you'll see it in a, uh, the rebuild video I did, I had to just drill them out. Which becomes a problem because if you haven't got replacements of these, you're in trouble. Uh, but there's a number of ways you can try and get that out, obviously. Let's try and get out the other, uh, this sort of opposing problem. There we go. Right. So that's all that is. Just a little uh, countersunk bolt. And then with carp screwdriver, toothpick, I'm going to start working out a groove in here. There's a little groove in there that needs washing out so that you can move the concentric washer across. probably doesn't really want to do that very much at the moment because there's no clean groove for it to go in so something like one of these so obviously just we need to remove that 13 there that's all we need to do uh, and the bracket holding the ABS sensor wire if you have ABS and the handbrake cable is attached to that. It's the same principles on the other vehicles, 206106. Just might have a slightly different arrangement here. You can see I've taken out what would be the plastic bung, and I've taken out that one. I haven't done this one yet. Now on this side it's not such a bother, but basically you need to get one of the end plates, which this is the end plate here, of the anti-roll bar out. It's particularly the other side, let me show you why. Notice on the torsion bar here, we have access to the end of it here, and the access to the end of the other torsion bar there. If we go from the other side, you'll notice a nice bit of access down there to one end of the torsion bar. But this side, look, you've got to remove the anti-roll bar plate. You've got to obviously undo both sides so that the anti-roll bar isn't restricting the movement of the arm to adjust the height. But you've also clearly got to get this side off. We'll take the whole plate out and the whole anti-roll bar out if you're changing it uh, to get access to there. So we'll be taking this side off um, and probably leaving the other side on, just floppy. Okay, back with our funky groove. Right, and then this concentric washer needs to slide that way through into that groove so that it then can pop out. So what you might need to do is give a little tap with a 
punch, not a broken screwdriver like I am. There we go. Notice it shifted across. So we'll give it a bit more of a spray. Now that it's shifted, and sometimes it takes a bit of jiggle jaggling. people watching this right now that have done this a thousand times and are going, what are you doing at? What are you playing at? Let's get it out. Yeah! She's finally out. And that's what she looks like. So you can give that a nice clean up and when you put it back in, lather it in grease. Now we've got access to the end of our torsion bar. Give it a bit of a clean up. Give it a bit of a soak. Not that it'll make much difference, but it looks good. So next thing is to get this little puppy off. I'm going to tap a T45 into it instead, because it is only plastic. And hope that that grips instead. And then I'm going to try and turn it whilst I tap on it, which it still could break the head off it. <laughs> oh, I nearly went then. Okay, well, if you have to go up to the next size, we go up to the next size. T50 time. Obviously, you're going to be slightly more limited than me for access, but I'm doing this more so you can see it clearly uh, than under the car. There we go, she's gone. And there is our plastic piece. That's what it looks like. Again, lather it in grease when you put it back in. So, uh, if you imagine this mirrored for the other side, uh, you saw earlier it's just covering one of the, uh, the bolt holes like this. So you're going to need to do the same the other side once you've got the anti-roll bar plate off, hence why we're doing this. Uh, now, there's a little trick to this. So, this thread in here, on the end of your anti-roll bar plate, on both sides, left and right, is an M12 by a 1.5, which happens to be head bolt size, many head bolts. So I would put a bit of grease on this, a bit of grease in there, and then you wind your M12 by 1.5 head bolt in. Now what happens is, as you push in with this bolt, it pushes against the anti-roll bar and pops it out. Now, you intend to obviously pop out either end, it doesn't really matter, so that at least one plate is off so that you can gain access to the torsion bar end on the left hand side or near side. So we want to put, pull this anti-roll bar plate off the anti-roll bar um, and obviously out of our way. Now you want to leave in the M8 bolt on that side just so that it doesn't rotate. And let's pop in our M12 by 1.5 head bolt. Now, if it gets tight, you might find it's trying to push out the other side. Go around, check. And that's exactly what it's doing. So this M8 bolt, I've just backed out a little bit, just so it can keep pushing. Okay, I'm going to go and check. It's probably done the same thing. If it gets difficult one side, I might budge. Just go from the other side. And sometimes if it is pulling, you can give it a little bit of a help by putting a lever in, just behind it like that. Just keep winding in nice and gentle. Any problems, just back out, check the other side's coming off. There we go. A bit of a leverage. Oh, there she goes. And she's out. Boom. And you can see the bolt gone through the middle, pushing against the anti-anti roll bar, pulls that cap off. The other method you could do <clears throat> is just take the end, that end off in there. 13 mil head on that bolt. Do the same the other side. Undo the anti-roll bar on one end. Um, couldn't, don't even have to do that. And just smash the back of these with a big hammer, obviously with the damper off. And that pulls the arm out and you could just turn it and push it back on to whatever position you want. But you are limited to basically what they call the nick method. So you're limited by the splines on the torsion bars by how many ways you can do it. So it's like one nick, two nick, three nick, four nick, the other way around, one nick, two nick, three nick, four nick. It's not ideal, it's a bodge method. Try and do it the proper way before you resort to 
smashing the arms off. So don't do that. Do it this way. So I'm just going to take a little T40 out of there um, and Steph's axles. So if you want a decent axle built, uh, provides parts as well. Some nice stainless washers in there, which is very cool. So that will come out without a trouble. And I'm going to do the other side as well. And you can see the coppery, coppery goodness. So I'm going to do the same the other side and take out my concentric. And I'm also going to do this bolt here. That's a 13mm nut basically. And you want to remove that spanner, socket, whatever. If your sockets aren't particularly deep, you'll need a deep socket for this. So just loosen it and take the nut off. It likely will have a little washer behind it. You just see that, let me pick you up. You just see that, there we go. Come on, focus. And there we have it. So that little bolt is attached to the end of the torsion bar, which you'll see for yourself. My nut and washer's out there, job done. Now if I'm changing my anti-roll bar, I've obviously just got to pull this now, and that would pull the anti-roll bar out, which I'm not, so I can leave it. And there's your other 30mm that you'll need to get to, so a little extension or a spanner on spanner. that one. You go under like that, you can just get on it like that. And it's probably a ratchet spanner job once you've got it untucked, because it's a bit awkward. If it's all nasty and caked up, which is likely, unlike this one, which is all nice and clean and new, then you're going to have some fun. I got it. And then of course your washer, don't forget your washer, because when you pull your torsion bar out, there's a the washer on the end, look. But that washer will uh, be needed. Uh, we're going to get a piece of masking tape or something on here, unless you want to paint on your car or draw on your car. A bit of masking tape does the job. Um, and we're going to measure from a point on your hub, doesn't really matter where. Uh, pick a point that's nice and easy and obviously doesn't change when it rotates. And measure from that point up to somewhere on there. Use a dirty finger even. Must be pretty accurate. You could even use a scratch but You want to measure that and make a note of it. I obviously don't value my paintwork unlike you probably do. So that's my distance. So I go three, four, five millimetres minus 25 which is what I want actually I want to go plus but I'm just using this for demonstration purposes would equal 3 2 0 so that would be your target my target is plus because I actually want to increase the right height so I'm going to be going up to 3 Seven zero. Does that make sense? So if you measured that at three four five and you wanted to drop forty five mil, you'd take off forty five mil three hundred. So we we're going to be raising this hub until the distance between the point you've marked, whether it be the edge of your arch or a line on a piece of masking tape, and the top edge here of the hub gets the distance you want. So I'll go measure the other side, and then we'll talk about removing these torsion bars. So a few different methods to get these torsion bars out. We've all talked about smashing the arms off. You could still do that. Slide hammer, uh, that's pretty common, um, and that does work pretty effectively. Um, and now, there is a thread, so this is sort of a professional way. There's a thread in the end of there, which is M8 1.25. My memory serves me right, please correct me someone if not. So you get a bolt with an M8 thread 1.25 on that. A good strong bolt, we're talking high tensile bolt, 10.9 plus, washer, and a bolt. And as you do the bolt up, it pulls, obviously the washer's strong enough, the torsion bar out. Now I've got this lovely little tool made up that has that thread on the end and a nice big cup. Go to the end of this, like that. I'm not sure I can do it one handed. We're going to do it up onto the torsion bar, like that. Now, what's going to happen now is this nut here, I'm going to do up, and that's going to hopefully pull this out. So that's the method I use, a little tool I made up. But basically, you just want to be pulling that torsion bar out, so slide hammer, 
or the M8 bolt, M8 by 1.25, or just a big strong bolt, obviously big as in big and high tensile and strength, not just some cheap F B and Q job, and some strong washers and spacers, and you can keep doing it up until you pull it out. So I have made this for me, thanks. I can't remember who it was now. I'll show you what's going on. See our torsion bar just starting to poke through now. Think I got it. <laughs> Uh, there's a point to be made. You need to support this when you do that. There we go. That torsion bar must have just popped out now. <sighs> popped out the other side anyway. We should just pop through. There we go. So there's your torsion bar now. All the way out. What I'm going to be doing now is measuring that distance between our hub and our arch, which we said was 345 originally. If I wanted to lower the car, I'd take off that and bring the hub up. So what I'll be doing is raising the hub until I'm happy. So that original measurement, not there yet actually. So like we'd now be lowered 10 mil, for instance, because we're at 335. But I want to actually raise the suspension 25 mil, so I'm looking for 370. We're at 355. Oh, 372. So I'm going to lock this jack in place, and then here's the important bit. You're going to keep this in this position. This is now your right height, and slide the torsion bar back in place. Now you might not be able to get it exactly. You might have to go up a millimetre or down a millimetre at this point, because there's not infinite amount of splines. There are a lot. And this is a stage where you've taken your torsion bar away, you've cleaned up the splines, and you've put loads of grease on it. Now you shouldn't have to force it. But sometimes it'll take a little tap to go home, depending on how clean your splines are. Might just take a little tap. Let's get this thing off. Sorry, sheep emergency. So uh, it takes some fiddling to get it back in. Uh, it's not really hard work, it's just lots of fiddling to and fry. After a lot of fiddling, I've got the right height just as I want it. I'm proper OCD about some of these things, I'm afraid. So uh, you saw some of the fiddling and then I actually ran out of battery. <laughs> so um, let me just zoom in a little bit for you. Now you don't need to go in as far in there, you need to keep knocking in until you can get that lovely little a lovely washer in. Once you can do that, you've gone far enough. Yep, I think we've gone far enough. So, just take any dirt out on this. Pop the washer back in, just like that. There we go, and once it's in line, Put our bolt back in, like that. And then we'll go around and put our little uh, eight mil nut and washer back on the other end, which would go correspondingly on that bit there. So 
It's at this point where the video is going to get a bit boring. You just now need to put basically repeat the process to the other side, take the torsion bar out, adjust the hub at the height you need it to, so adjust the hub at the height you want it, and then put the torsion bar back in until it keep rotating the torsion bar to get the splines lined up, tap it in home, grease it all up, put it all back together again. If you're lacking seals here, just stick a bit of RTV on it to make sure that no moisture gets inside, bolt it all back together, pop your wheels on, drop it back on the floor, feel happy at your new right height. So thank you very much, I hope that has helped being helpful, and if you think I need to correct anything, let me know. Uh, just remember this takes me hours to do sometimes, like it has done tonight, to do a little guide, because it takes me so much longer to video stuff. So thanks very much, give it a thumbs up please, and follow the Facebook page, that'd be cool. Piggy Power Official. Follow me. Thanks very much.